Hey everybody, welcome to Ascension Presents. My name is Jackie Francois Angel, and this is Bobby Angel. And today we're going to be talking about the stages of grief after a breakup. So we've, you've probably heard of the stages of grief after a death. Actually, a woman named Elizabeth Kubler-Ross created the five stages, which then became seven stages. Some people have 12 stages of grief after a death, but when you lose somebody, even if it's just, if it's through a breakup, not even a death, there's still going to be stages of grief that you're going to go through. Um, ways that you're going to have to process a loss of somebody who is an intimate part of your life, especially, you know, some people, we work with a lot of young adults and people give years of their lives to a boyfriend and girlfriend, maybe eight years, 10 years, sometimes five. But even if it's only three months a year, there are still sometimes going to be stages of grief and processing um, that you're going to have to go through when you when you lose somebody who you are talking to every day, multiple times a day, it's sometimes like this gaping hole. So we first want to say like it is absolutely normal to go through these stages. It's absolutely normal to, to feel grief, to feel sadness when you lose somebody, because the whole point is initially you thought this person could potentially be the person you were going to marry. That's why I'm assuming that's why you were dating. And so there was a hope and sadly that hope was dashed, whether you were the person that broke up with the person or you were dumped. I mean, I, I've, we've both been, I don't know if you've been on both ends or you were always the, the dumper, but I have been on both ends <laughs> of the being dumped and being the person who dumped. And it's never fun on either end because initially you thought this person was one way and then you kind of see the reality of it and it's like, oh man. So it's really a, it's dashed hopes. And then there is the grief of losing your friend, losing a person who is in your life a lot. I wanted to go as long as I could without saying a word, but here, <laughs> and to the extent that you have physically bonded with the person, especially if, if you've been living together, if you've been physically intimate, it's that much more of a, a physical divorce in the sense that we really have bonded body and soul to the person. And so when that relationship breaks up, we go through these grieving uh, movements and it's not just a overnight thing and we're back to normal. It, there is a process of understanding what life is like now um, on my own. And even if you were living chastely with this, like you were in a chaste relationship, you weren't having sex, you were doing things the right way, there still is a bonding that happens emotionally, intellectually, spiritually. But yes, when there's that romantic element as well, and there was that hope for this possibly could be the person I'm going to marry, there's a deep sadness that happens. And so we want to say, number one, that is totally normal. It is totally normal to be sad, to cry, to grieve when you lose someone. So we're going to kind of go through Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's five stages of grief and maybe add some things in ourselves that we have seen um, when we worked with people who have broken up, what we've seen in our own relationships. So the first one is denial. And obviously when someone breaks up with you, there is like, like what? Wait, no, that's not going to happen. No, we're going to get back together. And maybe we actually know people when they've broken up with someone, there's also kind of a denial of they're going to change, you know, the, this, we're going to get back together, right? Like there's not an acceptance. It's a denial that this really happened. And maybe there's still a chance, right? Or even a denial of this has happened. And now there's got to be some space and almost like a, I'm still going to text or I'm still going to like keep a friendship or whatever. And a denial of like there, yeah, that's a good point. There has been a break. Yep. And you guys, when you break up with someone or someone breaks up with you, there, ne there does need to be a, a space. You can't keep texting the same way. You have to have clear boundaries because what's going to happen further down the road um, is called bargaining. And so, well, so it goes denial, anger, and there might be anger in yourself. There's a lot of things that happen like, like, oh, am I not good enough? You know, you start and then you, there maybe is this anger and even hatred of that person. Like, how could they do this to me? I thought they loved me, you know, all these things. When you are the person who breaks up, there might be an anger at yourself even, or an anger that you thought that person was someone, like an anger of like, I wasted all this time on you. Like I wasted so many years of you. And sometimes this can include regret, especially if you're trying to live the Catholic life. You know, oftentimes we fall and we give ourselves to somebody who's not our spouse. And there is a lot of regret and then enters in shame as well. And we're angry at ourselves or we're angry at that person for like, oh, how, 
how could I waste this, my life on this person or give give them something that they didn't deserve? So it is absolutely normal for anger to come into the picture. And some anger is righteous, like some of it is rightly felt, but I think part of that is that human hurt. And so there is this, this pushback. So it's normal, it, that's a normal stage to experience and go through. The next stage is bargaining and I will say this is a stage that you definitely see the devil come in through lies. The devil is the father of lies and all of us are wounded. We have, most of us have experienced some sort of rejection. We have experienced fear. And so this is where the devil's lies will come in the whole bargaining stage. Things like, well, maybe if I do this, they will we'll get back together. Or we think if I would have done that, if I would have just done this, or maybe um, he'll change or she'll change. And we kind of start doing these bargaining things, but the devil will swoop in and even play on our fears like, no one's ever gonna love me again. If I broke up with somebody and the fear comes in like, what did I do? No one's ever gonna love me like this guy did. And so the devil starts playing on these fears that come in our mind like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be an old maid. No one's ever gonna love me. You guys, don't settle, okay? You might feel like I've wasted five years of my life, but here's the thing. Don't waste the next 50 years with the wrong person, okay? <laughs> the person you marry, oh my gosh, it's not just about the two of you. You're going to affect generations, okay? So remember why you broke up, all right? It's helpful to remember. So you stop those bargaining things, and if it helps you, write those fears down. Write the things down that are, the lies that are going through your head, write them down, and because you are baptized, you're a baptized Christian, you can renounce those lies. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie that I'm not good enough, that no one is gonna love me. In the name of Jesus, I announce the truth that you love me, I am loved, I am secure in you. Because the devil will play upon our insecurities. Whew, the devil will swoop in those times and say, oh, you're gonna be so lonely. You know, just, so write those fears down, bring them to Jesus, renounce them in the name of Jesus and replace them with the truth. Read the word of God because the devil loves to play. And this is kind of where it enters into the bargaining stage. Now we will say these stages aren't going to be necessarily clean cut. You might experience some of these stages together. You may go through one stage pretty quickly and dwell in another stage for longer periods of time. So it's not like it goes exactly you in may, order. You may, you may go one to four to three to back to four. So yeah. yeah. So just, but know that it is, a normal part of grief, okay? So depression, there is going to be sadness. For some of you, um, there's going to be a depression. And if you need to, we highly recommend if you need to go to a therapist, if you need to go to counseling, um, that you do that, okay? There's there's no shame in doing that. So if you if you need to seek further help than just processing it with your friends, or then, then please go see somebody because breakups can kind of open up a whole lot. And um, it's, it's, really, it's really difficult. But. And it's hard to sit in that place. It's, it's that low, the depression is that point of like, we, the world seems to have lost its color. And we're really reckoning with life is now different. This person that I was with and it, and it was comfortable and theme, things all seemed great. And I knew where I was going. Now I don't know. And now I'm feeling the loss. Like, the depression stage is really where that the loss is being experienced and and it's normal and necessary i'd say as as humans to be able to sit there and not just rush past it to not vilify depression um and we're not talking about clinical depression but, but and you can see can, a therapist at any time all of our therapist friends say you can you can see a therapist at any time but obviously if you are in a state of depression that is affecting your everyday life and it is persistent that is when you know like please see somebody okay because situational depression like when you do lose someone there are ways that we can cope that are healthy but there are times that if if, if it is affecting your daily life and it is affecting your work your sleep your like that is really you do need to see somebody okay please the the last stage is acceptance where you accept okay this was not the person god was calling me to marry and I'm okay with that. We want people to have awesome, holy, healthy marriages. And it's better to have, you know, even if you are engaged, you know, 14 broken engagements than one broken marriage, you guys. Okay, so just remember, God doesn't show you gold and give you silver. God's not like, oh, you had a great relationship. Huh, I'm not gonna give you someone as good. No, have hope. Have hope that God does have amazing plans for you and he has an amazing vocation for you, and an amazing calling. And he doesn't want you just to be miserable. God wants a beautiful, joyful, peaceful life for you. 
So have that hope, know your self-worth, be secure in Jesus. And maybe this breakup is a time as you're processing to really grow closer in your relationship with Jesus. Well, I mean, always, always is an opportunity to grow closer in your, in your relationship with Jesus, but especially when we're experiencing sorrow and grief, Jesus draws us closer to him to remind us that he is the only one that satisfies. No human being, even when you're married to like the most amazing person, this person is not God and still doesn't satisfy. Our spouses still don't satisfy every desire of our hearts. Okay, so remember that God alone should be enough. Even though he does call us to be with people, to, to get to heaven and to walk with to, to heaven, allow this time really to allow God to be the love of your life, to satisfy your heart for all those desires that you have in your heart, that maybe those hopes that you felt were dashed in this breakup, really go to Jesus, go to scripture, start reading the word of God, go to the sacraments, go to mass more often, reconciliation, go to adoration, and and really grow in your relationship, your love for Jesus, because he is the divine physician. He is the one who heals all wounds. People say time heals all wounds, but truthfully, Jesus is the one that heals wounds. And yes, it might take time. And yes, there might be deeper things that we're dealing with that are gonna make this breakup more difficult. This process maybe take a little longer, but I think it's really important to be honest with ourselves and vulnerable. And it's good to process this, especially with friends. Um, and if you need to get professional help, we, we obviously encourage you to do that as well. So know that if you are watching this and you have gone through a breakup, we are praying for you because we know how awful it is, how sorrowful it is. And we still have young people all the time coming up to us dealing with their breakup and you guys it's hard we know it, we know it's hard but it's that's it's not over your life isn't over okay you guys there is hope so know that this is a message of hope and that also you are not alone okay so we're praying for you pray for us any final words bobby angel nope nope okay all right <laughs> like comment subscribe please pray for us we're praying for you from all of us at ascension god bless they said that breaking up is hard to do. <laughs> now I know, I know that it's true. Cut. Don't say that this is the end. Instead of breaking up, I wish that we were making up again. Please cut.